Ukrainian President Zelensky making another plea for President Biden to visit Ukraine during a one-on-one -on -one interview with Fox News' Griff Jenkins. Watch. I think it's very important because, uh, you, you know, in, in our minds, in our society, the President Biden, the president of, uh, of the biggest democratic civilization for Ukrainians, for our understanding. I think that it, it would be a great signal, very important signal. Johnson came. This, as a new poll reveals, a Fox News poll reveals that 50 percent of registered voters disapprove of Biden's handling of Russia's war on Ukraine. 62 percent of voters are saying that the U.S. should do more to help Ukraine. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman, House Armed Services Committee member and former Green Beret commander Michael Waltz. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Welcome back. Uh, what are your yeah, thoughts thanks, on what the U.S. should be doing? A couple of weeks ago, we spoke when you said, look, Ukraine can win with just a few things that they need. Do you still feel that way? And what's your uh, uh, assessment of the U.S.'s response? Well, I agree with uh, Zelensky. Uh, President Biden should go to Ukraine. Uh, uh, Pelosi just went, and if she can get in there, I think the president of the United States uh, could get in there, too. It would be an incredible symbol uh, and signal, not only to Russia, but also to China, uh, and a, an, a, an ongoing rallying cry uh, to the Ukrainian uh, resistance fighters. Think of those poor souls uh, that are in the Mariupol steel plant right now, fighting to the bitter end, holding down over a dozen Russian battalions. Uh, but he should go, Maria. And one other thing, though, on, on Pelosi's visit, there was a lot of tough talk from her. That's fine. But guess what? <laughs> the House is out of session right now. The Senate is in. But the House is out, and if she's serious uh, about giving Ukraine everything they need to win, then call us back into a special session and get that $33 billion aid package passed. Well, I think, I think you make such an important point, and the same goes for the House's response to issues around China. I want to get your take on these new concerns over a potential deal that would allow a Chinese company with links to the CCP to take control of Forbes Media. Uh, in the Securities and Exchange Commission disclosure last month, the SPAC that the purchase would be done through, Magnum Opus Acquisition LTD, noted that Chinese officials could take operational control of Forbes. Now, Congressman, you were first to point this out, and you sent a letter to Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, last week. You write, we have this letter here that you sent. You write, should the CCP have a major footprint in a respected U.S. media entity, they will be able to spread propaganda through a platform here at home, undermining, undermining American interests. Uh, Congressman, what's going on? Why is it that it seems that the Congress, as well as this administration, rolls over when it comes to China? Your thoughts on where this deal stands? Well, Maria, the, the reason the CCP is the most dangerous adversary the United States has ever faced uh, is that they've corrupted so many elements of American society, as you have rightly covered. Uh, we already have academia, Hollywood, Wall Street, sports industry, the hedge fund, major hedge funds, and we could go down the list. And now uh, they're looking to get their tentacles uh, into major media conglomerates uh, as well. Why don't we just go ahead and, and, and sell them the Wall Street Journal and Fortune magazine and you know, every, every other uh, icon of capitalism? This is how the CCP operates. And my letter to Secretary Yellen as head of the CFIUS board uh, that looks at uh, what things should be exported and allowing foreign transactions in our major infrastructure is that telecommunications, major media uh, companies on how Americans get their news should be considered major infrastructure. It should be investigated by CFIUS. Uh, and if it's not, then I want answers from Secretary Yellen on why not. Well, Congressman, you also have the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board now apparently going to open the doors. Uh, this is an $800 billion fund, uh, and it's the 401k for our military men and women. I mean, you know this better than anybody. Uh, you, you, you probably you have this 401k uh, Federal Thrift Savings Plan, and they're going to be making a second attempt 
to put Chinese companies into the thrift federal savings uh, plan. We're going to talk with Marco Rubio coming up on this. He's been very aggressive and outspoken on it. But what are your thoughts about TSP participants uh, owning companies that may very well turn around to be the companies that uh, that lead the CCP to try to overtake the United States as the number one uh, military power? Think of, uh, Maria, think of the sad irony uh, of our soldier, sailors, airmen, and marine who are out on the front lines, who are out in the Pacific Ocean right, right now, uh, sending portions of their paycheck home to retirement, uh, saving for retirement, and the board overseeing it is investing those billions and their retirement savings into the market of our greatest adversary that has its defense companies openly listed. One of them is Bohai Shipyards that just launched last year two new nuclear ballistic missile submarines. Uh, and uh, we were able to engage President Trump on this. He had immediately called for a stop to it uh, and, and told yeah. the, this board to cease and desist, and they did. Uh, but now they yeah. know they can get away with it again. And, and we have to get out of this mentality of wow. uh, it, we're just seeking the best returns. Yeah. We are funding uh, their military buildup with our dollars. Co Congressman, we're going to keep a spotlight on this issue. I recognize the importance. We so appreciate your leadership on it as well. Congressman Michael Waltz, we'll see you soon, sir.